Hey guys, M3PRT here. So autopilot is a major setting point for Tesla vehicles. And in today's video, we're going to do a deep dive into what it is and how it works. So let's get started. Autopilot is a feature which comes standard on any new Tesla and enables the car to take control of the steering, accelerator and braking in certain scenarios. While you do need to maintain attention of the road ahead and keep your hands on the wheel, Autopilot does take the stress out of long monotonous journeys and in stop and go traffic. So how does it all work? Well, on any new Tesla, there are eight camera sensors. There are three camera sensors located behind the rear view mirror, which are used predominantly to keep track of the lane markings on the road ahead. There are two cameras on either side of the vehicle in the left and right indicator assemblies and in the left and right B pillars respectively. The cameras that are located in the indicator assemblies are rearward facing and keep track of cars approaching from behind, while the cameras that are located in the B pillars are forward facing and keep track of any obstacles that may be in the blind spots of the three front facing cameras. Finally, the last eighth camera is located at the rear of the car just above the number plate and this enables the car to keep track of any vehicles or obstacles approaching from behind. In addition to the camera sensors, there's also a radar sensor which is located behind the front bumper and enables the car to keep track of precise distance information between your car and the car in front. And finally, there are 12 ultrasonic sensors, six on the front bumper and six on the rear bumper. The ultrasonic sensors are used to provide precise close proximity distance measurement when parking or when maneuvering in tight spaces. And these are common on most new vehicles. The information from all of these sensors is then fed into an advanced machine learning processor, which uses machine vision and artificial intelligence technologies to interpret the vehicle's surroundings and make decisions as to how the vehicle should behave. So as you can imagine, all of this technology sounds very complex and expensive, but it's important to note that all of these features come standard at no extra cost on any new Tesla vehicle, which make it a very compelling selling point against its competitors. However, the real question for us is, does it actually work? And what better place to test it than on the notoriously potholy, windy, bendy, and commonly unmarked roads that we have here in Ireland? So let's see how we got on. So for our first test, we're going to start with a nice straight road with clear lane markings and little traffic. Autopilot will tell you when it can be engaged by showing a little grey steering wheel icon just under the gear selector readout. To switch it on, simply press the gear selector stalk down twice. The car will make a confirmation sound to let you know that Autopilot is engaged and the steering wheel icon will turn blue along with the detected lane markings. Once it's engaged, you can take your feet off the pedals and rest your hand on the steering wheel. You'll note that the steering wheel will begin to move beneath your hand, which definitely feels a bit strange at first, but you get used to it pretty quickly. The fact that any vehicles around the car are shown on the touchscreen definitely makes you feel more confident in the technology since you can see what autopilot is seeing. The motors that are used to turn the steering wheel automatically are also used to track whether your hands are on the steering wheel by measuring the turning force applied by the weight of your hand resting on it. If you take your hands off the wheel, after a couple of seconds, autopilot will start to flash blue. If you fail to put your hands back on, the flashing will become more intense and eventually the car will start to slow down to a complete stop. This highlights that Autopilot is definitely not a fully autonomous system and still requires the full attention of the driver in order to function properly. In terms of how the system reacts to other cars on the road, if the car in front slows down, Autopilot will slow down, and if the car in front speeds up, Autopilot will speed up in accordance with the speed limit. You can adjust the speed limit by scrolling up or down on the right scroll wheel on the steering wheel. If you want to change lanes or take over a car in front, then you have to take control back from autopilot. And you can do this in one of three ways. You can either grab the steering wheel, press the brake pedal, or flick up on the gear selector stock. So having tested autopilot on a variety of motorways, dual carriageways, and national roads, I can definitely say that it works almost flawlessly. The only times I had to take control were when I wanted to change lanes, when I wanted to exit the motorway, and when I was approaching intersections or roundabouts. 
So now that that's out of the way, let's move on to something a bit more challenging. So this road that I'm on now is a regional road, so it's quite narrow, but still has lane markings that are clear and visible. You can see from the blue steering wheel indicator that autopilot is engaged. One thing to note about autopilot is how it deals with speed limits. Autopilot gets its speed limit data from GPS mapping technology instead of reading it directly from the signs. So this means that in a number of cases where the speed limits may have recently changed, Autopilot may set you to the incorrect speed limit. This is something I've had to deal with a number of times and in those cases you can simply reset the speed limit by using the scroll wheel on the right hand side of the steering wheel. So this road is considerably more challenging than our previous examples since it's so much more narrow and features more pronounced bends. You'll note that when I'm going around this next bend, which is quite sharp, Autopilot produces a warning sound and displays a message to say that the auto steer is limited. The system remains engaged however, but the car does drift into the other lane slightly, which would be dangerous if there was any oncoming traffic. This is something that I've noticed happens quite a lot when traveling on regional roads, so this might prevent a lot of people from using autopilot on these type of roads. To really put it to the test, we're now going to try autopilot on some single lane country roads with no lane markings. In this case, this road has no center line lane marking, and when autopilot is engaged, you can immediately tell that it's very unsure about what it's doing. The steering wheel makes tons of random adjustments, and the car tends to want to pull to the right side of the road, which is directly in line with oncoming traffic. The autopilot makes several warnings for you to provide some steering input to assist the system in the right direction, but ultimately you'll find that you'll just want to disengage it because it's more dangerous than helpful at this stage. Our last test is going to be a test of how autopilot works in an urban environment. In this case, I'm driving in the local town. The system works very well when following vehicles in front, adjusting the acceleration and braking in a way that's smooth and comfortable. This behaviour does change depending on whether you have the car in comfort or sport mode however, with sport mode offering more abrupt acceleration and braking rates. In my experience, autopilot tends to drive quite close to cars that are parked on the side of the street, and this is something that can definitely be very disconcerting. In a lot of cases, I find myself grabbing the steering wheel to make sure that autopilot doesn't end up clipping someone's wing mirror. In cases where there are cars in front of you, autopilot works very well in stop and go traffic, bringing the car to a complete stop and then moving off all the while requiring zero input from the driver. However, if there wasn't a car in front, Autopilot does not recognize stop signs or traffic lights, so you would need to take full control of the car. So, what do I think of Autopilot and how it handles Irish roads? Well, out of all of the amazing things on this car, Autopilot is the one thing that I am most impressed with. It's completely changed the way I drive, and in fact, it does about 80% of the driving for me on my daily commute now. If you do most of your driving on motorways or dual carriageways or national roads, then you'll find that Autopilot is more than capable of handling the majority of driving scenarios, which leaves you more time to appreciate the scenery and to relax. And let's not forget, this is just the standard Autopilot that comes for free with any new Tesla. If you decide to purchase the full self-driving upgrade, then your car will instantly be able to automatically change lanes by itself and also automatically park by itself, in addition to receiving tons of future software updates that will eventually enable the car to fully drive itself in almost every driving scenario. If you're interested in how the full self-driving system compares to the standard autopilot system, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll be doing a video on exactly that over the coming weeks. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and if so, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.